together. Uh, as many, if not all of you know, losing a file can be devastating. In fact, utter panic and pandemonium can break out. Well, here at Conducive, we get it, and that's why we created Undelete, which is the world's leading recycle bin for file servers. With Undelete, you can recover lost or even saved over files in seconds, even if the files were deleted over the network. Super fast and super easy. You no longer need to spend hours searching through backup media to tell a user they need to redo their work. In fact, we constantly hear from customers on how Undelete saved the day. Now, I'd like to introduce my partner in crime, Senior Director of Systems Engineering, Howard Butler. He's a 30-year veteran of Conducive, specializing in file system architecture. And if you ever have a chance to get him on the phone, one-on-one, -on -one, take the opportunity to pick his brain. I mean, come on, he knows the guy who created the Lunar Lander game for Atari. Well, thanks, Jennifer. And by the way, don't let Jennifer's title fool you. She's quite technical, as you'll see as we go along. Now, one of the things I did want to mention, Jennifer, is that we'd like to make this session somewhat interactive. So there's a Q&A box over there, and as we go through the session, if you guys do have questions, please feel free to write them up, and we'll either get to them during the session or at the very end. So again, thanks very much, Jennifer, for inviting me to this webinar. Now, thanks a lot, Howard. Well, we'll get started here. Let me briefly give you some data on who we are. Now, you may have joined us today, and some of you may not have heard of Conducive Technologies, and you may be wondering, well, why in the world do these guys have any thought leadership or think they have any thought leadership to be speaking with us today in the first place on the topic that we're talking about? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who we are, and then we're going to break this down into two parts today. First, we're going to give you a high-level overview of the problem and how Undelete can solve it. Second, we are going to take a bit of a deeper technical dive into how Undelete does it. We're going to treat that almost as a training on how to use Undelete, but we won't go too deep, don't worry. Now, before we get started, let me just back it up here and tell you a little bit about who we are. Now, I personally don't like companies that spend too much time on their corporate slide, but I do want to know who I'm talking to. So we want to get right into the content. So I'm not going to read all of this to you. I'll just touch on a couple of highlights to give you a little bit of an idea of at least what our street cred is. We're actually a 38-year-old software company. We are the 12th oldest software company in the world, and we originally started as a company known as DiskKeeper. Some of you may have heard of that company, and in fact, some of you may have used that software in the past or may still be using it today. Likely, though, some of you are using Velocity, our patented I.O. reduction software for virtual servers today. For those of you who aren't familiar, Velocity increases system performance by an average of 30 to 50% or more. You can check that out on our website if you're interested, but today we're here to talk about Undelete. Now, on another point, our software is OEM'd by some of the biggest players in the market, and I'm sure you'll recognize all of the names here. Now, we work very closely as well with Microsoft as a gold partner and VMware as a top partner, and we've been partners with them for years. And we have sold over 100 million licenses of our software over the years and have that 90% plus footprint in the Fortune 500. And additionally, Gartner named us Cool Vendor of the Year not too long ago. Now, our Undelete software has been around for years, as you can tell since we're currently talking to you about version 11. Now, it's in use in thousands of organizations around the globe, from small companies to large companies, universities to government agencies. So that's a little bit about us. Now, Howard, I can't tell you how many times I've been on a call with one of our Undelete customers and had them say something like, Undelete saved my bacon. In fact, I've heard those exact words many times. There are a number of situations that can come up that if someone has Undelete proactively installed, it can make a world of difference. A user might accidentally delete a file and they don't remember the exact name of it, or if they overwrote a file, they might need an earlier version back. And when a user needs a file back, they usually need it back right now. We've heard from a lot of folks who can't get that file recovered, especially in the case of what I like to call a zero-day delete. That's when the file was created or a version of it was saved and deleted all before a backup could come through to secure it. We'll talk more about that on the next slide. Now, while backups will always be necessary, there are still little gaps here and there in being able to guarantee you can recover a file. 
and Undelete helps fill some of those gaps. It will let you recover files at the click of a button, and you can recover earlier versions, and you can also see who deleted the file. Now, Howard, would you cover a little bit of that for us in a little more detail? Sure, that's right, Jennifer. You know, trying to recover a file from backup can be very time consuming, especially when the user does not have all the details about the file that was lost, okay? Such as the full file name or when the file was deleted, by whom, and so forth. And those zero day deletions and changes that you spoke about, you know, are, are things that uh, files where you've either newly created them or have changed the content of that file since it was backed up but before the next backup occurs. Now, as you know, snapshots have the same problems as backups. Depending on the frequency they were scheduled to occur, they can help, but you know, snapshots don't fully eliminate this zero-day deletion kind of risk. And it can be quite costly in terms of storage requirements. Now, you guys might be thinking, you know, well, what about the Windows Recycle Bin? Well, that's a tricky one, too, because it doesn't capture files that are deleted over the network. It also isn't clever enough to catch those command line type deletions or application deletions. So, guys, let's kind of highlight one of those disaster scenarios. Let me show you what happens when a file is deleted on a network share from a client machine. And on the left, you can see the file visible from the client machine that resides on the server pictured on the right. Now, Jennifer, if the user deletes the file from the network share, it's gone. You know, it's not going to be found in the Windows Recycle Bin on the server, nor is it on the local user's um, work machine or workstation. The file is simply gone. So try to get that file back. You would have to stop what you're doing, try to go and find the file on a backup, which, again, is a very time-consuming nuisance. But here's the thing. What if it isn't there at all? What if that zero-day deletion scenario that we spoke of is not even backed up? So the user can't do their work until they get the file back, and he or she may never be able to get that file back. So as we've kind of pointed out, it's a huge disruption, especially if that user has to go back and recreate all of their work. And Jennifer, you know, that's kind of why we're pretty amped up about this new Undelete 11 release. Yeah, Howard, thanks for going over that. And you know, it, it is exciting. Undelete 11 is, I don't know, I, I guess I would call it like a mega souped up recycle bin. So let's start, and we'll cover a couple of these things here. Let's start with talking about the enhanced recovery bin. Now, it offers complete file protection by capturing all deleted files on a system, and that includes network share deletions, that's super important, application file deletions, and even <laughs> command line file deletions. Now, the next thing we really want to highlight is the versioning feature, and I'll give you an example. We have a customer who is a major clothing retailer, and they design all their own pieces. In fact, I am guilty of having a few of them in my closet. Their designs um, you know, are, are an evolution, and they, they will make 40 – I got to meet with them and, and talk with them about their use of Undelete in person um, out in Seattle not too long ago. And their designers are constantly making changes to files and saving them, and often when I go back to an earlier version, and they're making 40, 50 generations of these designs. Now, Undelete 11 lets them do that because it allows for recovery of intermediate iterations of files. And shifting gears, picture that high-level exec in your organization who's been working on a PowerPoint or a complex Excel spreadsheet for number crunching for a huge presentation they have coming up, and they panic because they saved over the data or an earlier version that they really actually wanted. Now, here's where you get to be the hero. You come in and get those earlier versions back for them. And if you have some power users who like to save directly to their local machines, you can even get Undelete Professional so they can do it themselves. And now in Undelete 11, file versioning has been expanded to include custom file types in addition to Microsoft Office files such as CAD, Photoshop, PDFs, and more. Now, 
Another major enhancement is that Undelete 11 now sports a familiar File Explorer-like interface, which makes it which makes it wicked easy to find and delete uh, undeleted files for the instant recovery. Now this includes drag and drop recovery of deleted files back to local volumes. And the interface also enables the system administrator to monitor file deletions. And Howard, I would say this is one of the most popular features. Uh, it, it actually provides forensic information so the sysadmin can see who deleted the file and when it was deleted. And uh, I think this is super interesting. They can also see when large amounts of file deletions occurred. Now, this last point is also an important one. Undelete has the capability to find those unknown deleted files with the extensive search feature. If you have the specifics of the file, great. You can search by name, location, date, owner, or by who deleted the file. But in case the user doesn't know the name of the file or you don't have all those other specifics, you can just use the wildcard search feature and search just by part of the file name or even by date range. Now, Howard, I think I've done enough talking here. So will you take us through the next few slides? I think everyone here would appreciate it if we rolled up our sleeves just a bit and showed them a little bit more about what's behind the curtain. Sure thing. I'd be happy to. As I was mentioning earlier, we've got this situation where deletes over the network shares simply aren't captured by the Windows Recycle Bin. So I'm going to walk you through step by step how the undelete recovery bin works. So let's kind of start here at the beginning. Once you've got undelete installed on a file server, here's what it's going to look like. Now let's say all these files get deleted, as we're going to show you in the next slide. You can see how the files have been deleted from both the client machine and the server. And as you can see here, recovering them is quite simple. Open up the rec uh, undelete recovery bin, go to the tree view, and you will see the files that were just deleted. They've been captured and now can be recovered. Next, you just select the files you want to recover, choose where you want to restore those files, and in this case, we're just going to put them back to where they were deleted from, and bam! There they are all back. No wasted time spent fumbling around on kind of wild goose chases, trying to find the file or sifting through those backups. Nothing like that. It's really that easy. Great. Well, thank you, Howard. So let's just highlight quickly a few more of the features that Undelete has to offer. Now, let's start with Emergency Undelete. That's worth mentioning. While it's best to have Undelete proactively installed, if it isn't, there's still a chance you can recover files that have been deleted. Now, Undelete Server also comes with an Undelete Client component, which you can distribute to key users, enabling them to undelete the files they have access rights to from a server with Undelete installed. Now, let's shift gears. What about when you want to delete a file and make sure it can never be recovered? That's the other side of the coin. We are all aware that when files are deleted from the window file system, that the location of the data is just marked as available. The data is actually still on the volume until overwritten, which may not occur for some time, if at all. To make sure that the data is really gone and not recoverable, we introduced wipe free space and secure delete which makes sure that the data is gone and gone for good. And Howard, I'm sure that there's some security-minded folks on the webinar that are going to get real curious about this, and they're going to have questions around these features. So I'll encourage folks to start dropping questions into the Q&A box now so that we can get to those during the Q&A session. Okay? Now, there's a few more things that we want to touch on here. And, you know, <laughs> every time I, I – I advance to a slide, another slide with more features. I'm just realizing how feature-rich Undelete really is. Um, there's just so much that you can do with it. So we'll touch on these briefly as well. Now, Undelete is now cloud-ready. And Howard, I think this is one of the most exciting new features in Undelete. Yeah, Jennifer, you're right. You know, the Undelete recovery bin can now be stored in the cloud using your OneDrive or other popular hosting services. You know, this preserves more of your free space on your local drives, and it also provides additional protection 
from security threats like ransomware. You know, and Jennifer, there's also an exclusion and inclusion list. You know, the default exclusion list includes temporary file types to pre be prevented from going into the recovery bin and filling it up with files that, quite honestly, you'd never really be interested in trying to recover. But you can always modify that list. And then, naturally, the inclusion list allows you to call out individual files and folders that you want to include under the undelete protection umbrella. And we also then have, you know, recover bin type of management is also available. By default, it automatically manages the size of the recovery bin so you're not having to go and babysit it. And I really wish we had time to kind of go into a deeper dive because there is so much that undelete can do for you. Things like the number of versions you want saved, whether each volume has its own recovery bin versus sharing a common recovery bin. Or you can also control the size of the recovery bin and retention dates, among other features. So folks, if you want to hear more about this, we can certainly take that up in the Q&A session. But the main point I really wanted to touch upon here is that Undelete automatically purges the oldest files from the recovery bin when the free space becomes critically low. And then lastly, I'll touch on the remote installation and management. Okay? The Undelete Server Edition does come with the ability to remotely install or uninstall Undelete Server and Undelete clients to the other systems in your network. Oh, and by the way, guys, here's an example of that File Explorer-like interface. It really is so easy that a caveman could use it. No offense to any caveman out there, but uh, I think work. you get the point. It's really easy. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're heading down to the home stretch here. I've got a couple more things I wanted to highlight. And I really kind of debated if we should include this much detail or not. But I wanted to give you a visual. It's one thing to hear about it, but now you can actually see it. Here's that search capability that Jennifer talked about earlier. It's extremely useful when the user doesn't recall the exact file name or um, the location of where that file was deleted from. You can now search by wildcard names specific folders, date ranges, and who, or who created or deleted the file. And as a reminder, this can also be useful to see how many files were deleted within a specific date range or just files deleted by a specific user. So you can find out who's the troublemaker out there. So let's go on to that next slide. Here we've highlighted the versioning feature. This allows you to see the number of versions or copies saved of each file and when they were overwritten. You can also open them up to view them before you decide to recover those files. So Jennifer, that's a pretty deep dive in the world of undelete. I think I'll save the rest for the Q&A session at the end. Okay, great. Thank you, Howard. And uh, I see we've got about eight questions in the box so far. Keep piling those in. I'm sure there's, if you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it. So let's, we always like to have a really dynamic uh, Q&A session. So keep jumping the questions in there. Um, so Howard, I'm going to go on here. We're kind of done with the, uh, the technical overview. Um, and I really appreciate you covering all of that. Now, just to highlight a couple of these uh, kind of save the day experiences that other users have had, uh, we've got a couple of success stories highlighted here for you. PC test covered accidental deletions by their engineers of very critical files. Uh, Marion County has come to rely on it on a near daily basis. And this one's really interesting. Money Movers uh, integrated it into their core functionality of their daily operations. I'm just going to leave that slide there for just a second because you might want to read that Money Movers one. And you're probably not reading it with me talking over it. So I'll just uh, leave that for just a second. Okay, cool. So on the next slide, uh, I'm just going to call one of these out. 
and uh, that's Maricopa County. They leveraged the versioning feature to get back a file an executive had lost that hadn't been backed up yet, uh, saving them from having to do hours of work over again. So there's just, you, you, can, you guys have probably all been through similar situations of wishing you could get that file back. So undelete's the way you can do that. Now let's just wrap it up here. We're going to go right into the Q&A session here in just a moment. Um, but let's just talk about the versions that we have available. So we have undelete server, and then the desktop client comes with that as a set. With the client portion, you give the user access to recover their own files that they have rights to from the server with, that has undelete on it. That doesn't protect anything on the local machine. I know a lot of folks have policies that they ask their users not to save anything locally, so you may not be too concerned about that, but you may still have those power users that you want to hook up because you know they do it anyway and they're your key execs. For those guys, you want to go ahead and get them undelete professional. That's what we recommend to save and protect data locally. Now, how do you get your hands on undelete? For existing customers under active maintenance, the upgrades are in your account. Log into your account, into your Conducive portal, and download your upgrade. And you can install Undelete 11 right over an existing copy of Undelete 10. No reboot is required. And for those of you who have never tried Undelete, you can get a trial copy directly from our website. And a lot of folks do ask, where should I use Undelete? My answer is usually we target your file servers, any place you have a lot of files you want to make sure protected, and also those desktops that have some critical files still saved locally on them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into the Q&A session now. I see that we have a ton of questions. I have not looked at any of the questions yet, um, so we'll get right into that right now. Um, <clears throat> let me just uh, get into the Q&A box. All right, so, um, if, so the first one's a comment. Thanks, Jennifer and Howard, on the invite. It's been a while. Eric at TBN here. Eric, it is awesome to have you. Uh, we need to come down and say hi in person here shortly, so uh, we'll be giving you a call, and uh, we'll figure out a good day to come down in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll see. How does this work with deletions or version changes caused by DFS replication in another site? Do we have to recover? Uh, from the server the change happened on. So Howard, I'll throw that one your way. Well, that sounds great, Jennifer. Thanks very much. And by the way, everybody, I did want to make a special shout out here. I have one of my colleagues here, Mr. Gary Kwan, on the call with us. And uh, Gary is the author and developer for the Undelete product. So I wanted to give him a chance before we jump into the Q&A session just to say hello to everybody. And uh, GQ, if you're still on the call there, um, I'm just going to give a shout out to you to say hello. How are you? Well, thanks, Howard. Glad to be on the call, and uh, uh, I enjoyed listening to the presentation here. And glad to be here on a deep dive questions along with you. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And and um, being on the call with us and stuff like that, I may toss a couple of these questions over to you and stuff like that. You might even have to. Uh, uh, spot check me on a couple of these, but uh, going back to Will's question there on DFS uh, replicated type servers there, Undelete can be installed on both servers uh, in that environment. Uh, the machine that actually owns the uh, storage device, uh, Undelete will capture that deleted file and you can recover it from there. Uh, GQ, was there anything else you wanted to, to say about DFS uh, replicated type storage? Uh, you're right, Howard. It does have to be put on that server, and it, it will be recovered on that server itself, not on the shares in, this, in the DFS case. So thanks, Howard. All right. Excellent. Thanks very much for the backup there, GQ. Um, so Jennifer, the, I think there were the some other questions. Question. Yeah, there are some other questions. I'll, I'll moderate them up here, Howard. And I think next time you introduce GQ, you should you should introduce him as Living Legend. I think I'm just going to name him Living Legend from now on. So, uh, one of the one of the titans of the industry on the of the call here with us. Thanks for joining GQ. Thanks, thanks, Jen. I think that's the way of saying the older guy in the. In the ah, crowd. that's right. That's right. <laughs> You're right. What do we well, got? So, uh, GQ between go us, ahead, we got what? 60 years worth of uh, computer, plus 60 plus years of computer technology between us. That's right, Howard. So hopefully <laughs> we can uh, give some of this back to the people here. <laughs> That's right. 
Okay, Jennifer, awesome. back, back over to those questions. That's awesome. So we've got Stephen Brown. Can undelete archive files be stored on another volume or NAS? Uh, yes, they can. Um, you can control undelete to either have each individual drive have its own recovery bin, or you can point to a common recovery bin, just so long as that storage device is a local drive to the machine uh, where undelete is installed. Okay, great. Uh, another question from EC. Question on if the storage required from undelete is on the server or client, or since network shares can also be protected. Well, it, uh, I think kind of going back to my earlier statement, um, where we're capturing files or, or protecting those files, making, them making it possible to recover those files, the disk volume does need to be a local drive to the machine where undelete uh, is installed. So that server that owns that mapped or uh, UNC path type of storage device uh, is the one where undelete would be installed and where the deleted files would be captured or, or protected. Awesome. All right, question from Leland. Uh, when you say it deletes the removed flag space, is that like bleach bit or secure erase? Well, we're not actually removing the flag space. Um, our secure delete is using a uh, NSA and Department of Defense type of pattern to write over that, that space now that it's been marked as free space such that it, the, the data that previously, previously was there can no longer be recovered. Okay, great. Um, we got another question from EC. Also with undelete, is the storage space the same amount as the data or is there some kind of compression? You know, I might toss that one over to GQ. We had talked about some compression uh, somewhere down the line there, but I, I don't believe that's currently there. Is that correct? Uh, Howard, that is correct. Uh, we are looking at putting that in on the next release to compress the data. But right now, EC, you're correct. Uh, the, the, amount of, the same amount of data is taking up the same storage space in the recovery bin. Of course, you as a user can determine the size of that recovery bin whether it's a fixed size or percentage of the amount of free space. And then when it reaches that uh, size, it will purge out the older one. You can also uh, do an age date too. So files over a certain age will automatically be purged. So uh, it's very settable by the users. Thanks, Howard. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was going to add on to that. The thing I'd emphasize in making sure the, the space that's being used for the capture and, and recovery of those files is part of the free space. And we are self or dynamically adjusting how large the recovery bin will be based upon the percentage of free space that the user can set. Excellent. Okay, great. All right, so uh, Todd's got a question. He says, what is the recommended available space required for the recovery bin? You know, there really isn't like a fixed size that you must have. Um, we'll work with whatever you really have that's free and available, but there is, you know, um, we're, we're relying on unused available free space to act as that repository for that recovery bin. Um, and we'll keep, you know, we'll be able to capture and place files in there, but at some point in time it will reach its maximum size based upon the percentage of free space. And when that occurs, the undelete recovery bin self-adjusts and will uh, remove the oldest entries out of the recovery bin to make room for newer deleted files. Okay, great. Now, just a housekeeping item. We are at the bottom of the hour. We're going to hang in the room as long as there's questions for us to answer. Uh, we're going to stay here. If you have to drop off, we are going to be sending out a recording of the call, so you can always pick up at minute 30 and catch the rest of the Q&A if you, if you have a conflicting obligation. So don't worry, you won't miss out. Um, okay, so we'll continue here. So uh, Leland asks, if I have undelete 10 on my file servers, can I upgrade or do I have to remove 
and reinstall. You know, Leland, I ought to send you some type of a gift card or something like that. That was a perfect tee-up to the softball <laughs> uh, type of uh, question there. So one of the things, and maybe we didn't mention it during the, the presentation, but Undelete 11 does not require a reboot to install the product. And so if you already have Undelete 10, you can do an upgrade or an install in place it will recognize that undelete is there. It will retain and keep the uh, uh, existing recovery bin intact, and you'll be able to complete that installation. No reboot needed. Perfect. Peter's got a really interesting question. He says, what about batch files that delete a file and replace with a newer version? In the past, undelete would not recognize this, so previous versions were not kept. Well, I believe with batch files, and they delete those files, replace it with a newer version, um, we're going to capture that file as it's being deleted. GQ, any thoughts or comments on, on that particular question? And Howard, you're correct. And if you notice in, in the new uh, UI, we changed the name of that column of number of versions to number of copies. And the reason for that is specifically for this reason, because what we found out is some applications create a file, delete it, then create that same file again with that same name and delete it. So we will save the previous copies of those files there now. Great. Okay, Howard. Great. Thanks very much, GQ. Okay, we've got a question from Todd. Can G Suite be used for cloud storage of the recovery bin? Now, I'm not familiar with G Suite, um, and so I might have to defer that question over to, to GQ there. Um, have you we know, done any work with G Suite? I, I have not either, and I'll have to take a look at it, Todd. If G Suite creates a local sync copy of it on your local drive, then yes, you, it can be used for cloud storage in that case. Thanks, Howard. Okay, excellent. Okay, great. Uh, EC asks, undelete 11 server, will this work if the file server actually maps a network drive on a NAS? If that sh map where, sh uh, see, I uh, know it will not. It has to be on that NAS itself because undelete will uh, only protect files that are local drives. Now, what we have done in some cases on some NAS devices where uh, undelete gets installed on that NAS device itself, then it can be saved. Then if you map that share to that NAS device, then in that case, they are protected. But uh, in, in the case where that map share is on that NAS device, it will not be, uh, you cannot undelete on that server of the map share, won't protect it. It has to be on that NAS device itself. Sorry, I was a little long on that. So if my takeaway is correct, GQ, the, 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 the environment there, the optimal word is that that NAS device needs to be managed and run by a Windows operating system. It needs to have a file system of NTFS or FAT32. And so um, if, the, if the NAS device we're speaking of um, is a Windows platform and we can install undelete there, we will be able to capture those files. If it's just a... Um, a derivative of some Linux type of environment and only serving up the disk to a Windows server as a mapped shared drive, um, then we would not. Would that be correct? That is correct, Howard. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay, great. And people are still dropping questions into the Q&A box. Keep them coming, guys. We are going to stay on as long as it takes to answer all your questions. Uh, so the next question is, what type of CAD files does it support? AutoCAD.wg. Uh, w, 
DWG, sorry, my alphabet today, uh, or Revit.RVT? Uh, you know, all of the above. Simple okay. enough. Short, short and sweet. Uh, mm -hmm. Angie asks, can you upgrade from version 9 to 11? Yes, you can, but it would require, and GQ, you might have to correct me on this, but it would require that you uninstall, undelete 9, possibly do a reboot, and then you can install undelete 11 without a reboot. That is correct, Howard. No reboot is required and uh, on uninstalling or installing here. And when you uninstall, the recovery bins will stay there. So when you install 11 over it, it will retain those files in those recovery bins. Oh, that's great, GQ. So you're saying that it, upgrading from undelete 9 to undelete 11, all they need to do is uninstall, undelete, no reboot required, they can install 11 and the recovery bin is retained? It will be, yes. The files in the recovery bin, yes. Yeah, the files in the recovery bin, that's fantastic. Okay. Kay asks, uh, what happens with unsupported extension files any way to tell it to support it? Well, there is the inclusion and exclusion list. So you can see what type of, what file extensions we are already excluding. And it'd just be a simple matter of modifying, you know, updating that uh, exclusion list to no longer exclude those type of files you wish to now have undelete recognized. You can also force it through using the inclusion list if there's specific file types or file uh, folders or directories uh, that you want us to purposely capture. Okay, awesome. Uh, Steve has a question that I want to hear the answer to as well. Uh, he says, any plans to maybe expand undelete to recover files deleted from a network share, such as files stored on a SAN? We would like to reduce some file servers and have those files on the SAN exclusively, but would need the functionality of undelete. Well, let's see. Undelete already does support files deleted across a network share. Um, the thing here is that undelete needs to be installed on the server where that share actually exists as a local storage device. And if that is not how your SAN is set up, uh, and that it's more of a network-attached storage, then what uh, GQ and I spoke about earlier there, those files would not be recovered at, that, at this point. GQ, I think we have a, a roadmap suggestion. Yes. And also, I just want to point out that if it's a LUN on that SAN that shows up as a local drive on that server, then of course Undelete will work on that. But I think you're talking about a different case where it just yeah. shows up as a network share. So uh, that's something we can look at in the future. Okay. EC asks, will Undelete 11 uh, server work with Microsoft DFS? Yes. That, that was okay. something that we had covered uh, a bit earlier in the Q&A session, but yeah. Um, the system, each system that owns that DFS served um, storage device, you would install undelete there. That's where you would be able to recover your files. Okay, so the next one is from Diana, and uh, this one says, can I install the update to a newer server without installing my old copy and installing it first? So I, I think this may be a, can, can undelete 11 just install straight even if there's no ver earlier version to upgrade over? Yes, that is correct. Okay, hopefully I've, I've interpreted the question correctly. Mike asks, uh, can you uh, upgrade from V9? Is a reboot required? I think we've covered that in an earlier Q&A, uh, so I, I, we'll move on because that's already been uh, addressed. No, no reboot is required. You'd uninstall 9 and then install 11. Uh, Dave Olson, uh, for versioning, can we add another extension aside from Office Types? Uh, it looks like it is selectable from the list but not uh, enterable as a text box for custom extensions. We may be getting some duplicate questions, but let's go ahead and touch on this anyway. There's a little bit of a different aspect to it. I'm not sure I followed the question there. GQ, did you have a, a comment on that last question? Yeah, let me take that one. Yes, Dave, uh, you can enter in now 
with uh, the UD11 uh, and, you know, a customized extension itself. So that is available with UD11 now. Okay, great. Dave's got a, a comment. He just said uh, it can be external uh, using InGuest iSCSI works great uh, to a cheap uh, big QNAP. Um, so, Howard, any comments on that? Uh, for iSCSI type devices, if again, uh, the, the key point here is that it needs to be seen by a Windows server or the Windows workstation as a local device. If it's a local device, um, and not a mapped shared device, then we can capture the file. Now, th this does bring up an interesting point, and I kind of wanted to, to kind of state this for the record. We talk about Undelete being able to capture files deleted over the network and stuff like that. So let's kind of envision what we're really talking about there. That network share device is actually a local disk to some server in your network. That's where undelete server gets installed. Now, as a user on a workstation, I might see that map share drive from my workstation, have access to it, be able to create files, delete files. I delete that file from my workstation that is accessing that mapped share. It's going to be captured by undelete that's installed on the server where that mapped share is a local disk. So hopefully I've kind of made that scenario clear that we do capture deleted files over the network, but it's undelete that's running on the server where that mapped drive is visible and seen as a local storage device. So, Howard, I think Dave's question might have come through in parts as well, but he does make a comment here about recovery bin location. Uh, we just touched briefly on locations that we can have for the recovery bin. Okay. So the location for the recovery bin would reside on the server where the disk is a local disk. We do not map it to copy the data over to a UNC path um, type storage device. It must be a local disk to that server. Just one addition to that, Howard. We do have a option called the common recovery bin. And that is uh, it will copy all the files that are in the local recovery bin and put it in one location at you, where you specify. For instance, you may want to set up one drive that has the recovery bin for all your other local drives, and they'll reside in this one location. And uh, therefore, it won't take up the space on the local drives. You'll put it all at this one location. Right, and so as a follow-up to that, GQ, that common recovery bin that you spoke of still needs to be a local disk on that server. Is that correct? Correct, Howard. That okay. is correct. Okay. Great. Okay, great. So Stephen, um, thank you for the comment. He says, not a question but a comment. Uh, undelete server is awesome. Saves time from retrieving from backup and pays for itself on the first recovery. Also great feature to see when and who deleted the file and simple interface to restore deleted file. Thank you for the shout out. Really appreciate that. Um, Dave has uh, the next question. It says, uh, if I use drive R, for example, as a recovery bin, what security access can be set to prevent a user from logging into the server and seeing the files? You know, the security permission settings are retained by undelete, so whatever you've specified uh, in terms of your uh, access control list, um, the same security permissions of the user who deleted the file um, would have had access to it um, and so forth. GQ, any thoughts or comments on um, file security permission settings? No, you, you said it perfectly, Howard. We retain the same security settings with Windows. So if that, you know, any file that the user could see before, they'll still be able to see 
uh, afterwards, but they won't be able to see any files they do not have privileges to. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay, so Dave's got a, a, a comment on versioning. He says, uh, it appears the actual versioned files are stored in the recovery bin and can be manipulated from there. Is that correct, Howard? Yes, that is true. Okay, great. And Steve says, uh, also thanks to Undelete for fixing in version 11 the ticket we originally opened with the issue of restoring large folders with large amounts of files in it. And uh, on behalf of our company, I'll say you're welcome. But no, thank you for the, thank you for the feedback, Steve. Um, we'll continue on, uh, unless yeah. GQ, if you wanted to say anything about that. I, no, I want to thank you, Steve. And uh, yes, that was one of the issues we wanted to fix there. But I got to tell you, Jen, the questions here are great. This is a great group. I'm enjoying this. Thanks. Yeah, this is awesome. We still have more questions coming into the box. And this is, I, I want to thank everyone for your Q&A as well. This is a ton of fun. I also see that there's five questions in my private q and I haven't flipped over there to look yet. I will do that. As you have questions, try to uh, drop them into the public Q&A uh, so that we can all see them. But once we get through all the public q and I'll go and see if there's any uh, uh, questions that are, are needing to be answered there as well. Um, so EC says, uh, can you send me the license model for the Undelete products? I would think it's per node, node being the system, server, or desktop. Uh, yes, I'll give you the high level, and then um, after the webinar, your appropriate sales executive will be in touch with you to answer that question. But just, I'm sure everyone's kind of curious, it is by node, so it's by server. Uh, typically, everyone just buys it for all of their file servers. And then um, the client access license, uh, GQ, if I'm correct, if we're still on the same model we were on Undelete 10, we've got, um, on Undelete 10, I know we had 10 client access license bundled in with each server for delivery. Is that correct still? That is still correct, Jen. Great. And if someone wants more than 10 client access licenses, let's say you have one file server and 30 users, we, we have the client access license or the CAL available for you in 10 packs, so you, and they're very, very cheap, like pennies. Um, so you can just add as many CAL packs, 10 packs as you need uh, to have all your users get CALs. And then as far as desktop coverage, that would be our Undelete Professional, and again, that is by seat. Um, so that's how you gain access to the software licensing-wise, and for pricing for your particular scenario, just ping us uh, after the webinar, and uh, we'll get you some pricing. Um, okay, so Dave Olson has a comment, uh, and Howard, maybe you can tease a question out of this. Uh, it says, uh, use in guest iSCSI, uh, does that, uh, I, don't, I don't see the question in that myself, but what do you have out of that? Well, I think we've covered the, the questions uh, about um, mapped shared drives and, and NAS type of support. So uh, I just go back to my earlier comments about sure. about that. Okay. Sure. I, this may just be another add-on on the same theme, so I'll just read it out loud in case there's another aspect of this that needs to be touched on. But Will C says, also, if the NAS supports iSCSI, you can connect it from a protected server. So again, not sure if that's a statement or a question, but I'll turn that to you, Howard. I understand, I think I understand what he's talking about there, but from an undelete point of view, we need to see the disk as a local disk, and I'm plain and simple. Okay, great. Uh, Dave comments that, that in guest he's been doing that for years. Um, Julia says, does it support the REFS Microsoft file system? Ding, 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 ding. Let's give her a big, <laughs> big round of applause. Unfortunately, um, you know, Right now, Undelete supports NTFS and FAT32. Those are the two primary file systems used by most everybody in the industry. There, I do recognize there may be a handful of people out there who have migrated and, and are focused in their business world using REFS. Um, as we hear more from customers that are moving in that direction, then we'll start taking a deeper look into uh, what it would take to put Undelete there. Okay, thank you, Howard. Uh, Todd says, uh, he asks, if the file server is running shadow copies, can that be disabled when undelete server is installed? Uh, I'm not, well, no. Uh, when when undelete's being installed, there is no checkbox to disable shadow copies and so forth. It still may be something that you would want to have. We're not, undelete's not meant to be a replacement for, you know, any of your backups or snapshots and things like that. 
were designed to be really an enhancement or augmentation to those type of, of solutions such that you can um, more easily and quickly be able to recover deleted files, especially those files that were created and or modified between snapshots or backup timeframes. Okay, great. Uh, Dave Olson says, and guys, we still have people dropping comments and questions in. Keep, keep them coming. We're going to go as long as we can here. Uh, Dave Olson says, uh, do you have a QNAP native app? You know, I'm going to go out on a limb there and say no. Uh, but GQ, any thoughts or questions on that? Not that I know of, no. Uh, I don't believe we do have a QNAP native app. But uh, I'll go check that out and uh, respond back to you, Dave. All right. Leland asks, uh, I like this one, can the Undelete desktop client be deployed via SCCM? The desktop client, I'm not so sure of GQ, but I'll leave that up to you. Is it packaged up as a setup or an MSI file? It is. So it can be uh, deployed through SCCM. It should be. Uh, but and, we, sh we should make sure it has all the uh, silent install qualifiers. I will we'll have to check that out. Okay. Yeah, I think most of our packages are, are done that way, but uh, I wasn't quite sure about the desktop. Also, just to mention that that can also be deployed through the undelete server. Uh, there's a push, a silent push install component that comes with the undelete server product. Okay, good. Uh, Steve's got a question. Follow up. Uh, this is a fiber channel fan with the SIF share managed by a device, not the server itself. Early Unfor comment. Yeah, unfortunately, no. Undelete's not going to be able to see those files. Okay, we got a twofer coming up. Ross Miles asks, how are the files in the recycle bin secured, e.g. RBAC for restores, encryption of data of reset? That's the first question. Okay, so we don't employ any specific type of encryption to the files. We rely on the NTFS uh, file system security parameters. Uh, for security. Okay, and the second part of his question, I think we've already covered, but I'll just read it out here in case uh, support for non-NTFS file systems. He gives REFS as an example, but are there any other non-NTFS uh, file systems that uh, Undelete supports? Currently just NTFS and FAT32. All right. Angie says, we have a unique case where we have files with no extension. Will these be captured? I believe they would be. Is that correct, GQ? That is correct, Howard. We'll catch all files right now. Uh, and unless they're put in the exclusion list. And in the exclusion, exclusion list, you could put in, you know, the file name without any file uh, type. The file type could be wildcard. And uh, we could then uh, exclude it or not exclude it. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Great. Diana just circled back to us and let us know that we did interpret her question correctly, so that's perfect. Uh, Era, EC had to sign off. Uh, Dave Olson, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, use re common recovery bin. The recovery bin appears as local disk to Windows file server using in-guest iSCSI. This way users uh, shared drive does not get filled. If users share gets full and files are deleted to free up space, they do not still fill up. So more like an informational Howard any any comments you want to add on to that well if it's a if it appears as a local drive then undelete will be able to use that either as its common recovery bin location for all the other drives if that's how you want it set up or if we're talking about the the users themselves um, their individual drives um, as local drives will will be able to create a individual recovery bin or a common bin, either one, how you want it set up. So good question. Thanks for the information, Dave. Okay, and I see David actually dropped it into two comments, and I missed the last part of it. Um, so we're, I'm at the last question in the main Q&A box. So if anyone's got a question that you didn't get to, drop it in right now, because we're going to wrap up here shortly. I'll check my, my side Q&A box and see if there's anything else in there in just a moment. Uh, Mike says, I just ran V11 full server, but did not see remote management as a choice. How do you load remote management console? Actually, it is there, Dave. 
Uh, let me let me just bring it up real quick here. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, indicate where it's at here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry, I have the professional, but I believe it's, if I remember, it's under tools, and uh, there should be a remote. There's con remote, oh, uh, connect to remote computer. Yes. Okay, so great. It is there. So it looks like every question that was in my private Q&A box was actually uh, the users all, all realized or the participants all realized and they actually rewrote all of those questions into the, the public Q&A box. So um, do either of you have Q&As in your, your my Q&A boxes, uh, Howard or, or um, GQ? No, I don't. I didn't have any other questions. No, I didn't see them. Awesome. Yeah, this has been a fantastic Q&A session, a fantastic group. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining the call today. This has been really great. Um, Howard, I'll come over to you for any closing comments you may want to add on here. I uh, just thoroughly enjoyed it, loved the questions, loved the back and forth, and appreciate uh, uh, GQ being able to jump on the call with us today as well. So thank you. And GQ, any, any closing thoughts on your part? No, I had a great time, Jen. I love this. And I just want uh, to... Uh, the last question by Mike, if you have trouble doing the remote management, just call our tech support. They'll help you out on that. All right, awesome. Thanks again to everyone who attended. That's a wrap, and uh, enjoy Undelete.